In this video, we take a look at five great documentaries that every DJ should watch. Find out which ones those are, coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. The first documentary I have to share with you guys is Scratch. This is a turntablism based documentary. It features many of the legends all the way from the beginning of DJing or of hip hop DJing all the way up to the current time when this documentary was filmed, which is around the year 2000. Um, it follows a lot of my influences from uh, the Invisible Scratch Pickles to the Beat Junkies. It's a, a lot more hip hop centric uh, of a DJ documentary, but definitely one that I think every DJ should watch. Um, you get a real cool history lesson in everything uh, hip hop related, not just DJing, but the other elements and how DJing kind of uh, fit in uh, hip hop in the beginning and then all the way, uh, all the way up to the year 2000 where DJing kind of veered off into its own world and uh, the term turntablism and turntablist came around and you know DJs started becoming their own artists uh, creating straight up turntable music like I said this uh, documentary features a lot of my influences uh, turntablism and scratching uh, were what really got me into DJing to begin with you know, besides my love for music so if you haven't seen scratch ready be sure to check it out next up we have the beat junkies for the record this was a project launched by LRG for the 20 year anniversary of the legendary LA DJ crew, the Beat Junkies. These guys basically created my style um, or the way I like to mix. I heard these guys on the radio growing up for as long as I can remember. Uh, I would tune in to any of the hip hop stations in LA damn near any time of the day and you would hear a Beat Junkie playing or in the mix, uh, guys like Melody, guys like J-Rock, guys like Rhettmatic, I mean, uh, Icy Ice, the list goes on and on. These guys basically developed the West Coast uh, blending mixing style that basically everyone after them kind of, you know, took and created and made it the actual like style that you still hear on the radio today. Um, Unlike the East Coast style where it's a lot of uh, slamming and a lot of uh, really hard cuts, the Beat Junkies really developed a, a super smooth, super seamless mixing style that influenced the generations after them and definitely influenced me. So if you're interested in seeing how uh, one of the most influential DJ crews on the West Coast especially was formed, uh, definitely check this out. Next up is Stretch and Bobito, Radio That Changed Lives. This details the creation of the legendary New York college radio show, the Stretch and Bobito show, how they met, and the influence and impact they had during their tenure on the radio for college radio and when they made the transition to uh, one of the bigger hip-hop stations in New York. I mean... The guys that these guys had, the MCs that these guys had in the studio, rhyming with like with them during the show. I mean, it is just a laundry list of East Coast and some West Coast legends as far as hip hop's concerned. So to see that element of DJing, the whole radio aspect, especially for hip hop, nobody did it better than Stretch and Bobito in the early to late '90s. I mean, these guys are legends. Names like Big L, Jay-Z, Big Pun, Fat Joe, the whole DITC crew, um, Souls of Mischief. I mean, the the name, the, the list goes on and on and on. These guys have everybody come by. And for good reason. They played dope music. They played music that they wanted to hear. Music that you weren't necessarily hearing on mainstream radio. And they broke tons of great artists and had tons of great artists come through. Uh, and on top of that... Both of them were great DJs, Stretch especially, like super dope on the turntables still to this day to see that mixing style, especially, you know, pre-DVS, pre-Serato, uh, whatever you want to call it, super smooth on the turntables, dope documentary uh, to get an insight for hip-hop radio DJing 
in the late 90s uh, and early 90s as well. Now to take it a little bit more current, we have the hashtag series by Red Bull Music. This uh, came out a few years ago. Um, it's a series on different types of you know, alternative subgenres of music uh, from things like alt R&B to just straight beat scene, uh, blog pop, all that stuff. A lot of these um, subgenres have kind of morphed or changed or in some essence completely gone away. But it's dope to see the DIY aspect that these performers and DJs took to create a new type of music, a new vibe, and how each of them individually uh, used the internet and technology to create something new that wasn't really around before. And to see the, the difference between what was shown then and what was popular then and kind of take a look at what's popular now and see what it's changed and turned into is really interesting. Really cool dichotomy of uh, then and now, especially with how fast music is changing. Um, seeing these different subgenres and the names that are in these uh, little documentary pieces are great. You've, you'll recognize some of them, some of them probably heard for the first time if you haven't seen this hashtag series before. Definitely worth the view of all the, the episodes. So if you haven't checked out hashtags yet, be sure to do that. And lastly, we have who I think is the king of the beat scene in L.A., the god himself, Flying Lotus. This is his mini documentary that Pitchfork put out a couple years ago, Fly First. Um, details him traveling, making or doing the rounds of the festival scene, playing his own music. Gives you an insight of the life of a uh, traveling DJ producer. I mean, it's not all glamorous, and he definitely details that. Uh, goes through anywhere from arriving at the airport to the hotel to do the presser to perform and after and re rinse and recycling and do it all over again. Uh, Flylo is definitely one of like I would say one of the most important artists of like the last decade. Not only doing production, the DJing, now he's making his own movies, scoring his own movies and others as well. So definitely. Uh, an, an artist's artist and it's cool to see his process of handling performance and his routine and how he gets through a whole festival season and one more bonus that's not necessarily DJ related but hip hop related it's uh, Beats Rhymes in Life The Travels of a Tribe Called Quest uh, this documentary was awesome I mean Tribe is definitely one of the best uh, hip-hop groups ever of all time they put out hit after hit after hit and records that are timeless and have made a definite impact on anybody that listens to hip-hop i mean if you put on a couple tribe songs i'm sure uh any hip-hop fan will know at least a couple lyrics to at least one of the songs tribe went through their trials and tribulations and unfortunately right before their last album just dropped uh, as many of you know five passed away so now I think that this documentary actually holds even more meaning than it did previously. So if you haven't seen uh, Beats Rhymes in Life yet, definitely check it out. So that's my list of five great documentaries that every DJ should watch. So question of the day, which one of those documentaries have you seen? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.